There's going to be spoilers ahead for Black Mirror Seasons 1 through 6, so if you haven't watched all the episodes in Black Mirror Season 6 yet, Ah, you've been warned. Okay, let's get started. I'm back with another toasty Black Mirror Season 6 episode analysis. And this time, I'm focusing all of my attention on Jonah's Awful, the episode that first introduced us to the streaming platform called Streamberry, a fictional streaming service that is meant to replace Netflix within the show of Black Mirror, even though they still mention Netflix later in this season. What was the name of that Netflix thing? After eating an adventurous meal with incredibly exotic flavors. Is that salt? Joan, this person right here, opens Streamberry to watch something with her fiancé, Krish. Then we see this incredible selection where they skim past the true crime BAFTA award-winning documentary, Lock Henry, Truth Will Out, made by Davis and Friends from the next episode appropriately titled Lock Henry. The title Finding Ritman is the Finding Nemo equivalent of Black Mirror, except it's not going to have as happy of an ending as Finding Nemo, when they eventually find Ritman. Apparently Hotshot is streaming on Streamberry in 2023, with the same exact judges that we saw in the episode 15 Million Merits. Let's see what else do we got here. Oh, Rowdy and Peanut, the Black Mirror equivalent of Tom and Jerry, a cute celebrity dog, and you can Netflix and swill with the six-part documentary event, The Callow Years, focusing on no one other than the national anthem's Michael Callow, following his journey from his first encounter with a pig, uh, to him eventually owning a zoo. The real journey of success. There's another true crime doc about Victoria Scalene and Ian Rennick from the episode White Bear, and the pictures on the cover are the same pictures uh, from the news broadcasts that they played at the White Bear Justice Park. Hopefully that documentary will be highlighting the injustice at the Justice Park, but knowing Black Mirror, the documentary will most likely be in favor of the unethical practices happening there. Oh, and at the bottom left corner of the menu down here, you can see Ashley O from Rachel, Jack, and Ashley too. As the cover features a screenshot of Ashley O's iconic music video. You remember the one with the, with the groundbreaking dance choreography. And of course, right over here, we have Junipero Dreaming. Not Euthanasia, Inside Project Junipero from Lock Henry. Euthanasia. Inside Project Junipero. Boy, a different kind of film or series about San Junipero. I did love how this cover is featuring the South African coast that is posing as the Californian coast. Out of all the titles that are shown to us, the one that stands out to me the most is Sea of Tranquility. When I first watched Black Mirror's masterpiece, The National Anthem, I witnessed this conversation. No won an Emmy for his effects work on that HBO Moon Western things. Sea of Tranquility. And ever since that moment, I wanted to see that ever-living heck out of the Sea of Tranquility and what it looked like. And don't get me wrong, I mean, we saw glimpses, like the Trinkheads dressing up as the characters from Sea of Tranquility in the episode Nosedive, and then we saw the anime version of the Sea of Tranquility in the episode Rachel, Jack, and Ashley 2, everyone on the entire planet's favorite episode. But after 12 years of waiting, and only being given these small glimpses of a fictional show inside a fictional show, something happened. Krish was on a roll. After making making impeccable decision after impeccable decision, like picking the right partner who wouldn't cheat on him and adding bold flavors to his meals. Is that salt? Then on this spree, he decided to suggest the greatest suggestion that anybody has ever suggested in the entire universe of Black Mirror, which was recommending that they watch Sea of Tranquility. How about Sea of Tranquility? It was right there. It was right in the palm of our hands. But then another thing happened. Eric said it blows. Oh, well, if Eric said it blows. Yeah, fuck you, Eric. Regardless of Eric, can we talk about Joan being awful for a second? Mainly about the fact that she's not awful. I mean, she's not incredible, but she's not awful. Not at all like how Streamberry's making her out to be. Streamberry's AI initially gave a positive show to its users, but that apparently didn't chime with a neurotic view of themselves. So now the program, our quam computer, or quam pewter, quam pewter, inflates the selfish, weak, or craven moments of the user in order to depict their innermost fears more than it was depicting the truth. Like how Joan drops her pen on Sandy, but in Streamberry's retelling of it, Selma intentionally throttles it at her head. There's also that moment where Joan is on the floor crying and feeling the pain of Chris leaving. But then in the Streamberry version, we only see Selma fixing her hair and walking away with more pride as Chris drives away. And then it cuts to credits. Joan chose to not take things further with Mac and decided to stay in her relationship with Chris. She didn't want to fire Sandy and felt bad the entire time. She wasn't maliciously going out of her way to hurt people. She was just trying her best to be a quote-unquote good person. 
Joan is awful, depicts the corrupt nature of these big tech companies and how they exploit the data of their customers and users. The song Anyone Who Knows What Love Is played throughout all of Black Mirror, like every season of Black Mirror. It was first introduced in the episode 15 Million Merits, and then we heard it in White Christmas, Men Against Fire, Crocodile, Rachel, Jack, and Ashley 2, and then finally, we hear it at the end of Joan's first day in Joan is Awful. The song is something pure and innocent, to represent technology that ends up being corrupted by people. Technology that could be used for widespread good, but is turned around on us and used to make our lives a living hell. Anyone who knows what love is plays at the end of Joan's day, because everything that we witnessed up until that point is about to be corrupted by Streamberry, as they make everything over-dramatized and show Joan in a way more negative light. When the program starts making stories within stories, the celebrities playing Joan and the people around her get more and more famous, and every version of Joan becomes progressively more evil and sinister than the previous. All this negative portrayal causes viewer attention to go up, and keeps the user and everyone else involved glued to the screen, thus driving up engagement. And really, at the end of the day, that's all anyone cares about. The internet is just one big advertisement at this point. This is what I love about the plot of Jonah's Awful. Remember a while back when I was all like, this episode depicts the corrupt nature of tech companies and how they exploit the data of their users. Jonah's Awful depicts the corrupt nature of these big tech companies and how they exploit- Well, to me, it also represents how this exploitation is just going to keep getting worse and worse as time goes on. Starting with some not so subtle commentary about targeted ads. Streamberry goes beyond just utilizing Jones' personal data Data that relates specifically to her. The streaming service begins to use Joan's data about her friends and loved ones to give them targeted ads, using Joan to get to them. Like how Streamberry sends Mac and everyone else a notification about Joan's new drama during Joan's uh, very productive meeting with her lawyer. Hey, what are you doing out there? Cool. The lawyer just casually mentions how companies listen to our conversations and give us advertisements that are tailored to us. You know when you got your phone face down on the table and you're in your kitchen and you're talking to your friend about studio advisors and then, you know, you go on your computer and what pops up? A studio advising ad. Almost like this episode was making a point that this is just the thing we all accepted. It's kind of like in the episode 15 Million Merits, where people in the mainstream media are saying what's wrong with society, but no one's actually doing anything about it. Instead, every everyone kind of just feels satisfied with at least someone calling it out. It's almost as if saying what's wrong and then turning it into another joke or meme can dilute the severity of the problem and let our society further normalize wrongdoing like surveillance or intrusive data collection. It's wild that the plot of Joan is Awful could be an actual thing in the not so distant future, mainly due to how much freedom we give to our phones and the apps that exist on our phones. If you told someone this from like a decade ago, they would come up to you and they would slap you in the freaking face with a copy of George Orwell's 1984. But nowadays, if you tell someone this, everyone's like, Neh. So what really got to me was when the CEO of Streamberry, Mona Javadi, goes on to talk about how the whole program exploits the user's fears and insecurities. You know, also known as some of the most vulnerable and personal parts of who the user is, as like a human being, then openly breaks about this exploitation to a reporter. A freaking reporter of all people. Someone who is going to tell the world about this. Mona is not hiding anything and openly admitting to all this to a reporter so she can put a spotlight on it. The concept of businesses collecting our personal data and then using it to keep us hooked to their platforms has been memed so hard into oblivion that the general population just like doesn't care anymore. People like myself who willingly give up this privacy tend to think to themselves that the way it's currently being exploited isn't that bad. But you know, whether or not that's true, it's not really about where it's currently at. It's about where it's headed. The entire point of Jonah's Awful is showing where this exploitation is going in the future. And if you think for one second that companies like Streamberry won't pull this kind of stuff in the future, you have to understand that this is a business and businesses will always try to make more and more money. You know, like how businesses work. As the motto is make line go up to appease Bogod. Like how the Streamberry app records very intimate and private private conversations, like Joan's therapy sessions, in order to obtain sensitive information so they can use it against Joan in order to make profit. If you were in a therapy session and there was a 
representative from Netflix standing in a dimly lit corner doing some diligent note taking. I'm going to make the educated guess and, and assume that you may have an issue with that. You may be like, hey, representative from Netflix, uh, get out. But somehow all of this is fine if it's through your device. Like there's that great moment where Mac doesn't want to get uh, freaky with Joan because it's going to be more public. Similar to something like, oh, geez, I don't know, like how people have the ability to listen in on very intimate parts of your life using your phone or other devices. So these kinds of companies are going to be expanding their methods of how they profit off of our data. They have been and will continue to be pushing these limitations gradually. And it looks like everyone is going to be gradually accepting it. I thought this episode was a perfect start to Black Mirror Season 6 because it's the epitome of what I thought Black Mirror represented before I watched Maisie Day. Joan is Awful is a perfect representation of how we're hooked to the dark reflection of ourselves in this new trivial, like uncertain digital age. It's the reason we watch a lot of Black Mirror episodes. We are utterly fascinated with this dark reflection, and that's the reason we continue watching. So they put little details in this episode, like the progress bars on Joan's screen lining up with the progress bars on your Netflix. Joan is watching the dark depiction of her reality, and in a way, we're watching the dark depiction of our own. Okay, it's getting a little dour in here, but don't worry, I prepared for this with a designated time in the video where we talk about more Easter eggs. A designated Easter egg time, where we bring out a bunch of happy Easter eggs in order to help you from falling into a bottomless pit of hopelessness. So here we go! We see Sandy and Mac are using the app Smithereen from the episode Smithereens. When Mac is in the bathroom browsing his phone and using the Smithereen app, you can see this headline from USN stating that protests continue as UK PM Michael Smart touches down at JFK for official visit, referring to the controversial politician Michael Smart from the episode Demon 79. Below that is Lacey P, aka Lacey Pound from the dystopian episode Nosedive, another episode that represents the current state of our lives on social media, or just the state of our lives. Lacey is yet again uh, superficially sharing her excitement about a uh, well-positioned food. And below that is Tusk the Kid, I guess famous musician Tusk from Hated in the Nation now goes by Tusk the Kid. Probably after he criticized that one kid who was doing a dance and impression of him. You remember when Tusk insulted the kid on that one talk show and then it got him canceled. Tusk was actually the first person in the episode to get canceled. So it's fitting that he's writing a hashtag can't cancel me. I'll wait till he's introduced to hashtag death two. You can see a Lock Henry poster in the Streamberry HQ. 22 minutes into the first episode and we have the first broken mirror of the season. A common trend that we see throughout the entire series. As most episodes in the show will show us a mirror that gets cracked or broken. Or just a mirror that is not having a good day. Like at this moment in 15 million merits or this moment in San Junipero. When Joan is reading the newspaper article of Mona Javadi. You can see this other article that's slightly more interesting about uh, grains going out of style, talking about the grain implant from the entire history of you. And on the back of the same newspaper, you can see something about TCKR Corp, the same people who made San Junipero. Another detail I greatly appreciated about this episode is how the staircase and other parts of the Streamberry HQ looked like the quantum computer, or I'm sorry, Quamputer, something to further hint at the fact that they were in a simulation. The real joke felt like she wasn't in control of her life. I feel like I'm not the main character in my own life story. And I feel like that line was alluding towards the fact that we as consumers are giving up more of our rights and control to these big tech companies like Streamberry. We're letting their influence affect how we feel about ourselves and how we go about our lives. So when the real Joan partnered up with Annie Murphy to sneak into the Streamberry HQ and kill that computer, it was her making her own decision and stepping up and taking control of her narrative and in a way, taking back her life. It's not my decision. It's Jones. Something that we as consumers should uh, do. The real Joan decides to open up that one coffee shop that she's always wanted to run herself, which apparently is not that unrealistic. I did some research. The real Joan would have been charged with breaking and entering and definitely destroying that uh, piece of property, which is the computer. And if it's the quantum computer, the estimate for that is probably like $15 million. In the state of California, which I'm assuming this episode of Black Mirror is taking place in, if Streamberry decides to sue her for like minimum damages, she's most likely facing 
facing a felony with a possible three years of imprisonment or a fine up to $50,000. I don't know how much worse it can get beyond that because I'm not a lawyer, sadly. Otherwise, I would have more money and I want to have to rely on channel memberships. If Joan went to prison, it looks like she made it out and it looks like she's doing okay. Some people are saying that Netflix missed the golden opportunity, which was to have your Netflix profile come up on the screen when Mona brings up the rest of the shows that the computer made. But I guess Netflix did end up making something like this. It's called youareawful.com. But do be aware of the terms and conditions they have to accept in order to obtain your very own You Are Awful. It states that you have to grant Streamberry, I mean, sorry, the Netflix entity and affiliates the irrevocable and perpetual right to use your real or simulated image, name, photograph, voice, actions, etc. Uh, and without compensation. Which is kind of repeating exactly what uh, Streamberry did to Joan. I really should have read uh, the terms of service before accepting that. Anyway, if you want to support this channel and help it keep going, and if you want to see more Black Mirror videos just like this one, well, you know what you should do. You should hop on board the USS Price and become a crew member, where you can earn any of these awesome loyalty badges. Just look at some of our amazing crew members rocking some of these badges right here. Beautiful. Mm -hmm.